if I describe Somalia, a few words about it. It is a chaos, calm and chaos, development and destruction, and joy and pain. But also it's uh, where I grew up, where I got my education, where I find my husband, and where I had my children. Before, before my husband, this is my husband. Oh, okay. uh, this is my husband. His name was Elman. He was a businessman, but also was engineer. Before the war, we had a business through Somalia, especially in Mogadishu. We used to work child, so children, uh, straight children, and also the youth who didn't have an opportunity to have uh, their lives to make it easier. The war happened. After the collapse of Siad Barre, everything in Mogadishu was destroyed. Our shift go back with the youth who has been uh, recruited by the warlords and they were using and taking advantage of it. We start the program called Drop the Gun, Pick Up the Ban. That is the program Elman was working on it. The whole city became a more difficult, a lot of risk, but at the same time, we had a small children. We had to dis divide. He, st he stays in Mogadishu, and he was doing the work he's supposed to do, which was the helping the youth and trying to make them better in their lives. And I also, I had to leave to find a security for my children. When he was doing this program for a few, uh, for a while, it became impactful for whole Somalia. A lot of recruitment was going through. He was changing, and people are coming to help, to ask help. It was a disarmament, hundreds of young guys. The warlords, they didn't like the idea what he was doing, but also there were a lot of treatment and harassment saying, you have to stop what you're doing. He didn't listen. And a lot of people was telling him, you have to stop or you have to have a security. He said, I can't have a security and gun around me. Why I'm trying to say, but the gun, take the ban. So it wasn't making sense. He lost his life, the cost he was doing it, and he believed he can have a beast in Somalia without fighting. They assassinated by the warlords, 1969, 1996. A few years later, me and my children, we, had a, we got an asylum in Canada. We have been living there and we had a life, normal life, the ordinary Canadian family. I raised my girls over there, but at the same time, I knew I had to go back. I have to go back to Somalia, and I have to finish the work we started in a long time. I came back to Somalia eventually, and when I came back to Mogadishu, it was worse than I left. I didn't have money, and I didn't have a lot of support. But I knew I have to do this. I established the Elman Beast Center, which was um, the name, the legacy for my husband. And we have been working as an organization. We started first working on human rights. And also we established the first crisis center for in Mogadishu, for women and getting raped. It was another difficult, and people not talking about the issue for women and the sexual violence, which was taboo in Somalia, and you can't talk about it, even though it was happening. I have to talk about it, because I knew I came back, this issue, this mission, and also our mom, and I have a girls. So I always comparing 
the life of my children and the life of the people who doesn't have the opportunity we had. That's when we start the program called Sister Somalia. We talk about the rape crisis and the women what they're going through. And it's, it was a lot of difficulty and risk. But at the same time, I knew someone has to talk about it and someone has to stand up. And I, I did that. The program for Drop the Gun, Pick Up the Bane, it became more successful. We work in different regions in Somalia, but also we knew it was an alternative for the youth who was fighting and not knowing why they're fighting. It was no alternative. A lot of young guys are fighting because to find an alternative in the livelihood, find us food and shelter and livelihood, a symbol of life. That's what they're looking for. But when you have, when you give an alternative, you see the impact and you see how things are getting changed. Um, conflict and recruitment, the young people, it's, it's getting more and more, but we can see the change. And 60% the our students who graduate the element, they were getting jobs. And 15,000 was in employment in, in whole through Somalia. And that it gives us because the business community, private sectors and local, local government and youth are working together. Our model contributed a lot of more young people to drop the gun and pick up the bear. We're the only organization who has been doing this work for many years and seeing that, the change. The change in, in Somalia and working to the bees through the local community. It's a lot of risk involved, but that is the work we chose to do it. And it sees, you can see the change when you are working. And having that opportunity, it gives us, the, in, as a community, to be part of the change. And Somalia will change, and we go into the Garabis, but always, Elman Legacy is going to be there. And I hope all of you can join us to do the work we're doing in Somalia. <laughs>